Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. I'm doing the extended European outlook for today's second video. So uh, we're going to be looking at weather for the next 30 days across uh, Europe. We will also look at weeks 5 and 6 as well. No, sit back, relax, enjoy. And I shall talk you through our 30 day European outlook in a moment. To say that first, a video today on our 6 day UK weather forecast. And there's a 10 to 14 day on the way later on today as well. So please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. For gals, well, this. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I think so much. He said, don't INT for supplying the charts of the data as well, by the way. Right, we're going to start off with week one, 500 millibar height anomaly. No, we're not. We'll start off. With the, <laughs> with the week one mean sea level pressure anomaly. Um, take us through this week, the 10th through to the 17th of March. A blocking area of high pressure will be dominating the weather this week across the North Atlantic and down to Greenland, Iceland, with a trough of low pressure covering uh, many parts of Europe. That drives colder air into the north and west of Europe on northerly and northeasterly winds. The 500 millibar height, it only means the 500 millibar height, and doubly shows that up very nicely. Again, that blocking air of high pressure in the Atlantic going up to Greenland and the trough of low pressure there in Stream and North West Europe. There is another ridge over on the far eastern and southeastern side of Europe that brings warmer air up from the south and the east and uh, brings down colder air into the north. Okay, so the temperature anomalies are uh, for this week showing a west east split or a north west south east split, really. Now, a colder and average temperature anomalies in the north west Europe that covers much of Scandinavia and North Nordic regions, also going down into western Germany and uh, the Low Countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, UK, Ireland, France and Spain, Portugal included in those below average temperatures. But over on the eastern side of Europe, it's a lot warmer and um, particularly in the far east and southeastern corner where you have temperature anomalies of 6 to 10 degrees uh, above normal into western Russia actually over 10 Celsius above average. So very mild, if not warm, early summer-like conditions over on the eastern side of Europe, especially down towards Greece and Turkey, but colder in the north and west, as far as the Mediterranean is concerned. So we have Spain and Portugal below average, but anywhere anywhere else further east was, uh, comes out with above average temperatures of this week. So data wise there's a three-way split going on. So it's dry up an average in the far north west Europe, particularly focused on Ireland and the UK, but also the low countries, Germany, and some parts of Norway, Sweden, and Finland dry up an average as well. And the extreme southeastern corner, particularly Greece, also up towards the Black Sea and over to uh, Turkey comes out drier than average. But in between, we have a swathe of wetter than average condition, particularly wet through Spain and Portugal, with low pressure dominating there. Also, into the bed and up some parts of France, below average temperature, uh, below, um, above average precipitation, what are you doing, Gav? Above average precipitation there, a really quite uh, a wet week, actually, on the Côte d'Azur. And then Italy, through the Adriatic and into the Balkans, comes out wetter than average as well. Well, and those wet conditions then extending up uh, towards uh, Ukraine, for example. So pretty wet through this central and eastern uh, swathe. Right, week two is the 17th to the 24th of March. So changes again. Low pressure is to the west of uh, Spain and Portugal. The blocking area of high pressure is collapsing into uh, Europe. That should, that should start to bring some warmer air up the western side of Europe. And got low pressure in the far north of the Atlantic and through the Norwegian Sea. The 500 millibar height anomaly shows a ridge from the Atlantic covering many parts of Europe, low pressure up here and low pressure down towards uh, the west of Spain and Portugal too. Temperature warming is warm up in the west of Europe then. Uh, next week we uh, lift the temperature up and most parts of Europe actually are coming out with above average temperatures. The core of warm is still over in the far eastern side of Europe but all areas have uh, average or slightly above average temperatures in the west and more significantly above average in the far north and eastern portion of Europe and as far as precipitation goes well many areas are dry but it is still quite wet down towards Spain and Portugal and also we have Norway coming out uh, quite wet as well but most other areas are uh, drier than average and particularly from the UK and Ireland the Atlantic over towards the east side of Europe 
Southern and southeast of Europe are, uh, I suppose, closer uh, to average. So there could be some showers still left down in the far south. Week 3 is the 24th of March to the 31st. Um, signal weakening. So a bit of high pressure still towards the Black Sea. Hint of some high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure in uh, Scandinavia. Still with this, the hint of this cut-off low to the west of Spain and Portugal. 500 millibar heights look like that. Uh, rather a bizarre pattern. So some blocking around Greenland. Could that be the first signs of a tropospheric response to the sudden stratospheric warming event we've been talking about recently? Top of low pressure in the extreme northern portion of Europe. And still with this ridge actually uh, dominating many areas. Temperature on its end remain above average in most places, right from the Atlantic side of Europe all the way over to the Russian side. Generally above average in most places with those temperatures. So the precipitation anomaly, where well, it's a weaker signal, still quite wet down towards Spain and Portugal, and also turning wetter through Scandinavia and Nordic regions. And then we have these drier conditions again covering uh, many parts of Europe. Week 4 is the 31st of March to the 7th of April. Um, well, then we see the low pressure dominating across many areas, actually. You would expect a corresponding... So, you expect, like, the, the wind be coming in from the north, from the northeast, a little bit like that, based on the position of the low pressure. But there's not much sign of blocking. But, um, you know, maybe we'll see some uh, a strong signal for blocking in uh, next week's update. 500 millibar heights look like that. So again, some blocking around Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure, high pressure, I should say, more towards the east side of Europe. And then maybe some lower pressure through here. But it is quite a strange, you know, quite bizarre uh, anomaly. Temperature anomalies are still largely above average, though, in most places. And precipitation-wise, very weak signal now. Um, strongest signal is, like, wet down towards Spain and Portugal. And possibly the far northeast, including the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania. But to be honest, it is a, it is a weak signal there. Right, that's your 30-day uh, look. Okay, done. Let's go through weeks five and six data before we go. So week five is the 7th to the 14th of April. Now, now we have a stronger signal for blocking. That could be um, the uh, tropospheric response to the strap warming. So blocking around green Iceland, low pressure through here, here and here. And you think we're bringing in the wind from the north and the northeast, through the north and the west of Europe. 500 millibar heights, again, focusing the blocking around Greenland and up towards the polar region. Temperature on is still largely above average in the east, beginning to come down out in the west. I suspect they'd be colder than that in reality. And precipitation-wise, very weak signal. But you can see where the blocking is. It's up here. And uh, these areas are sort of wetter uh, than average as the jet stream gets pushed southwards. And then week 6 is the 14th to 21st of April. No changes still with that blocking signal up to the north, around Greenland and Iceland, low pressure bed through here, our winds coming in from uh, the east and from the northeast, potentially strong signal for blocking with the 500 millibar heights uh, focus um, through the high latitudes there. Uh, I think that is definitely a response to the strap warming there. And as far as temperatures go, well, they're continuing to uh, come down with the temperature anomaly. And so precipitation goes looking rather wet, especially through more southern and western parts of Europe. So the more interesting uh, weather is in April, actually. Could we be setting up a cold, a cold wet April here, courtesy of the SSW, possibly. But before then, not a lot going on, as we said. We're starting off quite cold in West Europe through week one. The rest of March looking generally reasonably mild in most areas. But uh, watch out for April, perhaps. We'll see. Right, just a snapshot of what model is showing. Look, could look completely different. We'll do this again on Saturday with a UK and Ireland focus video. We're going to be back a little bit later on. We can change to 14 there. Come back for that later for today's extended European Outlook. That's now. I'm back to watching.